Hey, it's Freddie Sherman, and this, of course, is the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. And they say the ship is haunted, and they even do all kinds of Halloween festivals there and special ghost tours. I stayed on the ship a few years ago. It's a hotel, and I had the guy that gave me a tour. I said, I want to go where the public can't go. I want to go behind the scenes to the places where the ship is haunted. I want I don't want to see all the places you can go to on the ghost tour and stuff like that. I want to go into places where no one goes where they say it's really haunted. So this guy took me on a great tour behind all these locked doors to see the haunted boiler rooms. And then afterwards he gives us a tour of the engine rooms. Here we are. Wow. Even smells like the oil and... Yeah. Wow. Over here, uh, just beyond those doors, is an engineering space now, but those are the other sides of the double hull. Those were called wing tanks, and they were for carrying fuel. Wow. So some of the fuel was carried in the double bottom. Just beyond this bottom here is another four or five feet of tank before you actually get to the bottom plate. And are we at the front or the back? Midship. Midship. This is number three boiler room here. And you can see those grids there are the feet for the boilers. Wow. And is this used for anything now or it's just eventually... Well... Like the haunted stuff? Or? It is part of our haunted tours. Um, also, you see there's a bridge Right there. One of, our, one of our dark harbor mazes comes over the bridge. And uh, you can look down in here and there's all well, sorts of special effects. I see. It. It's called the Hellfire Maze. I see. <laughs> but it's machinery that's not used for anything else. So go from boiler room to boiler room because they were uh, under pressure, like we talked about when we were up on deck. So you would go open this door, go in, close this door before you could open the door and go into the next boiler room. Wow. Stop doing anything to the Queen Mary, there would be. It would all look like this. Well, it would, but it would still be here. Wow, incredible. And uh, those are the turbine rooms down here. There were 16 turbines in these two engine rooms. These represent watertight bulkheads. Everything from here to the stern remains intact. Uh, this area here is a 35,000 square feet exhibit hall that wow. we can have all sorts of exhibitions in. And the Ghost and Legend Tour is in this boiler room up forward here. And then we have the central lot of boiler rooms that hasn't really been developed yet. So we have high hopes of someday developing that into some sort of museum or even having uh, one of the boilers recreated to go in there. And is it finished space that's just empty or is it still raw? It's just like they left it at the ship. I see. So it's, um, it's actually, it's pretty cool in itself. Yes. You know, you can see where they torched everything out. You can see the feet on the very tank top where the boilers used to stand. It's just one out of two engine rooms. Wow. On the other side of that bulkhead was the forward engine room. This is the after engine room. These are condensers because after the steam had done its work down in these eight turbines here, it will be turned back into pure water, so back to the boiler room and used over and over and over and over again. They got the bitter end wow. of use out of that steam because the Queen Mary did not distill its water from the sea. They carried enough water in the bottom tanks to supply um, domestic and uh, feed water for the boilers. What, what was, was it coal fired or what was Bunker the... Bunker sea fuel oil. 
Wow. Which is almost crude oil. Right. It has to be heated to about 165 degrees before it can even be pumped into the boilers. Wow. Um, that's with all the battleships and the naval ship torn off the ship. So just behind here are these giant reduction gears, and that tames that down to the desired 172 or so revolutions per minute. The engines could be sped up to 200 RPM. That would give you better than 30 knots, but for all intent and purposes, the Queen Mary's top speed was about 31 knots. Wow. And they just didn't make a fast crossing out of the blue. It was well planned. It was planned around water currents and winds. Right. They would carry a special grade of fuel when they wanted to make a fast crossing. That was better than what they would ordinarily right. burn. So it and was a well orchestrated event. How many miles per hour is that? 31 knots is about 36, 37 miles an hour. I see. Yeah. And here are the telegraphs that are connected to the ones on the bridge. These two do the inboard shafts. The engine room up forward do the outboard shafts. So there being coming and going from harbor, there would be men in front of each one of these valves. And when the command would come down, they would spin the valves around and that would emit the steam through these steam pipes into whatever turbine to go forward or astern. Wow. Um, different engines were required to go astern. So if they were at sea and they wanted to all of a sudden slow down quickly, usually the bridge would try to navigate around something rather than put uh, superheated steam of 700 degrees in a comparatively cold engine because it would shatter it. It right. would expand too quickly. Um, a crash stops about five miles, although it was never tried. If you suddenly took the power away, that shoe would probably coast about 10 miles. Cool. Amazing. Covers removed off of here so you can actually see the gears. Wow. And of course, they had to be lubricated, and these were all the lubricating pumps and everything so over here to keep that going. And of course, all the burr had to be taken off of those by hand. And uh, one of the engineers in the Queen Victoria actually worked in the QE2 when it was a steamship being built in the same yard the Queen Mary was built in. And he says, Oh, Edwin. He says, Working on those reduction gears was a character builder. Did they take them out to clean them or they had to clean them? Well, this was during the construction phase. Oh, I see. Yeah. But uh, the QE2's turbines did have to be removed uh, because they went on a shakedown cruise and the nozzles, no, was it the nozzles? The blading itself was not, uh, the design was bad and uh, the blading had to be uh, had to be beefed up with tubes going around the blades to keep them from separating. So this is uh, the turning gear. There's a worm gear down there. So even when the Queen Mary's in port, the turbines have to be turned over slowly so that they stay in an expanded condition ready to sail. So this would stop the... Now or back? Back then. Back then. Yeah. No, they haven't turned since December the 9th, 1967. Okay. And this is cool. The ship is currently floating on the water, permanently moored in Long Beach, but through a glass window you can see one of the ship's giant propellers.